thank you for being here. I'm John Miller. I'm, I'm a member of the Council on Aging Board of Directors. I'm John Miller. I'm a member of the Council on Aging Board of Directors. Welcome. Um, while I'm while I'm thinking out loud here as I stand, um, do we have any extra seats in case we get more people that are coming? In? Yes. I'm just. I mean. Okay. Okay. Um, so what we wanted to try to do today is uh, give everyone an overview of where we currently stand and what our plan is moving forward for our new complex um, at the Gates campus. Um, so we're going um, to we're going to review a couple of things and, and get everybody up to date. You can probably see some renditions that are beginning to show up behind me. Um, if you have any questions, I would ask you to hold your questions until the presenters are done, because your question may get answered over the course of their comments. Um, and for any of you, as I always do, if any of you who are not familiar with this building itself, um, restrooms are right behind you. So if you need to go, they're right behind you. Um, right on top of you, actually. Yeah. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Linda, who's going to give us an overview of some, some things that she wants to talk about. Thank you, Hi, everybody. I'm Linda Hayes, the director of the Senior Center. And I know many of you, but not all of you. So thank you all for coming today to this first uh, public information session. I will also, I would love to introduce, because you know this has been going on a long time, and I will talk about that. But we have our architects here. So Joel Bargman is to my left. And his um, other architect, Rachel Young. And Steve Kirby is our project manager from Vertex, the engineering company that was hired. And then as well, we have Karen Canfield with us today, our board of selectmen <laughs> member. And Carl Campania from the Public Information, uh, sorry, Public Building Commission. And then also Mara is here, Mara Glancy from the Recreation Commission. Yeah, say hello. I think I think I forgot anybody else. Um, nicely enough, we have SCTV here also. Um, <clears throat> so those were introductions. And initially, really, I just want to lay a little groundwork here. And I know many, if not most of you here, are very familiar with the building you're in and the difficulties and challenges we face. Here's, you know, the top picture. Not so bad, really. It's just the front door. But the accessibility, of course, issues here have been great, tremendous for years and years. The back, not such a nice picture of the back of that where, you know, we have raccoons and falling shingles and broken glass and a parking lot that's inadequate, needless to say, whether the front or the back. Uh, I hope you all weren't too inconvenienced today to get here, but yet we do this a lot. And the patrons that we have visiting us on a regular basis um, for act participating in activities are so good natured and flexible, it's amazing. Um, and then there are those who just come on occasion but are still inconvenienced and, and it's never easy to keep people coming. So that said, you know, what we provide, many of you know that, of course. And I mean, there's, there's a multitude of things that we try to do for you all, for the community in general, for our older people here, but exercise, fitness, wellness, recreation. And of course, we're here, we're at the Harbor Community Building, we're dispersed to spaces and places that will take us, <coughs> churches, um, anywhere. Um, education, information classes, of course, people are interested. They are interested in learning, they're interested in what's going on in the community, they're inter interested in hobbies, um, which we try to provide for them. Socialization, very important, just gathering games. Um, community outreach, of course, that's very important. Um, Jenny Gervis is our outreach coordinator here, and you know there's a lot that we do that people don't see that she does that people don't see um, to assist whether it's remote, at risk, older adults, or just in the community and, and making people more aware of what we do for them or could do for them in terms of assistance. Volunteer opportunities, we try. Many of you are our volunteers, um, whether it's here at the front desk, maybe leading activities. We really do try to recruit and have something. But we're very limited, very limited, and there's more people that want to do things than we can even provide them opportunities to do. Transportation, of course, is integral here, and, and it is a busy spot. Sadly, we don't see a lot of our transportation people. They end up maybe being a community themselves on the vans, but we do both local and out of town, 
And all of these things provide connection for people in all of those various uh, categories. But what we can't do, don't do, because of our limitations, of course, and challenges, again, the volunteer opportunities, which you know, could be many, many more. Um, daily lunches is something we really lack. Now, we have a kitchen, but we really can't do that and do anything else here. So, of course, that's one of the reasons, if not the reason, that we don't. And even home-delivered meals, that's all handled through the state agency, the South Shore Elder Services, so that's separate. So even the volunteers are theirs, um, and that that's a, a big boy for us, really, because it would be a tremendous connection. It would be a connection with um, the people who receive those deliveries and the volunteers who provide those as well, which is great. Um, proper exercise space, of course, there's so many things we can't do. I mean, we shopped around a Zumba class to every space in town we could think of, and then she finally just left us. I mean, and people really liked that, but any sort of dance, we just haven't had that appropriate space, of course. We do well with what we have, and we have tremendous instructors. Um, and it's been said, we do a lot with very little, and we try, but, you know, there's a point you plateau. Anyway, the limitations are endless, and the opportunities to cultivate and create new programs, new classes that people would enjoy is, you know, we pretty much have reached our bandwidth on that. Um, so here's some numbers. I hope you can see, but I'll just go over them. But 60 and over population over the last few years, and then projected. Um, 2010, that's the last census, so that's but what we work on when we get our funding from the state every year. They, they pay a certain dollar value um, per older adult over 60 based on the census. So that was 4,334. You know, by 2014, there were 5,116, and it has steadily increased to this year, 5,320, or last year, 5,323. Um, statistically speaking, with the population itself of situate, which is pretty steady around the 18,000 mark, it has increased. It's also projected maybe to go down a little bit. That's an anomaly, I suppose, for 2020 in the orange. But 24% in 2010 up to now, you know, last year 29% coming up to 30 and 32% of the total population are adults over 60. And even if we look at this 55-plus number, that's a big one. They're coming, as we all know. Uh, we're all coming. You know, 48%, that's half the community. And again, in the next 5, 10 years. So it really comes up to the 35 and 36%. And then maybe it starts to plateau according to those predictors that they have in place. But plateau is not going down either. It's just not necessarily increasing at that point. And then participation statistics here, you know, I almost hesitate to say it because it seems a little bit sad, but we serve 1,100 people, if not more now, 1,200 really close to that, just in terms of coming in and participating in activities. Um, I just thought it was interesting. That's our number is duplicated. That means in the first row, 960 people coming in to some activity. But they might come, you know, 10,000 times total. So the duplicated check-ins, we try to keep our attendance electronically. We probably miss some, as many might know. Some people don't want to carry the scan cards, and it's fine, but we try. So that might be a light number, but it's gone up from you know a little over 900 to 1,100 to almost 1,200. And eight months of this year, we're still at over 900 people. Again, that's not 5,000. We certainly have more people we would like to reach. And we're trying, but there's just only so much. And a lot, um, as I'll talk about in a minute, are turned off, of course, by the facility as well. But, you know, a couple things. You know, this wonderful picture, maybe you can see exercise classes at the other building. That really is disconnected from the staff and what we do and what we want to know about our patrons. Um, so when wonderful moments happen, we don't see them. When someone is in need, you know, the other class participants, thankfully, do take care of each other, and it's a wonderful community, even within the classes. But we miss that quite often. We're not there, everything being remotely happening. This wonderful luncheon, you know, the 4th of July luncheon, was in the parking lot. I mean, you know, it was great, but it was in the parking lot. There were cars there, too. So just saying, just a couple of the things that we do sort of find funny here. Um, so how did we get here? And I'm not going to take a lot of time. And if you've read a couple of my newsletter articles, I've gone through this a few times. But still, you know, 2014, um, 
into 15 was when we did the needs assessment study and report, which was done um, to try to determine and really make public, make people aware of what the needs were in the community from not only the people that would be served, but the people that were almost going to be served, 45 to really into their 80s. And they received a good response to the survey at that time that, that was mailed to the households. But it said needed more senior center, um, a need for more senior center activities and services, a desire for a better facility, and the majority were planning to remain in situ and age in place, or at least age in the community that they had brought their families up in or grown up in many, in many cases. That was an important study. It's still on the website. We still refer to it. We still try to take um, take uh, the information from there and work it into our programs and services when we can. So then, after that, so 2015, that same year, later in the year, the Building Reuse Committee was, was formed through the Board of Selectmen, and they met for a year looking at the vacant buildings in town, what might they propose for use and or what else we needed in the community. And of course their recommendation, not to um, put too fine a point on it, but, or limit it, but it was for a standalone senior center after all. Um, at that time it was presented as it was their recommendation of possible renovation of the Gates building for Town Hall, which would include the recreation facility and the gymnasium and that same campus. And that really because of the expense and the size of that project that was really tabled to make the senior center a priority. <clears throat> Just for a little background to get us where we are here today. And then after that, so then 2017 rolls around and Joel and, and his team were part of this. The feasibility study was done to see what location maybe would be suitable or um, ideally used for a senior center. And Fast forward to October that year, 2017, the gate site was chosen um, by the selectmen for a, the best location for the senior center. And there were many reasons for that, and I think it was a good choice considering what the previous recommendation had been and what the resources up there really are, as we now, we now have seen through this, and you'll see today with Joe too. But in 2018 then, the funds last April at town meeting were allocated for designing um, a senior center at that location, and that's been going on now for a year. Um, the scope was expanded come July, you know, to include recreation and the gymnasium. Um, anyway, so from there you will see a lot of what um, we have been doing. And I want to thank really this team has been very invested and committed to this project and to really getting us over this, this hump, this last hump to try to get this project completed. So, sorry about that. I think the project summary, again, I'm, I'm just sort of a lead in for Joel here. He will pick up on a lot of this, but, you know, it's updating um, the gymnasium at, in the recreation department space somewhat now, not as much as had been originally planned, but, you know, something that the community loves. It, um, it's useful for everyone, youth, adults, senior programs, recreation. Right now, it's the minimum necessary for ADA compliance, which is important. Um, and Joe will talk about a lot of that. Um, hopefully, then they can phase in some other needs and priorities as able. It does create for us a new 15 and a half to 16,000 square foot senior center building uh, for community senior center, providing for a multitude of day need programming for us, but also for the community. I mean, in addition to activities, social events, a lot of people would want to come to some of the things we've even had and had to farm out all over the place, as many of you know who've been going. Um, but it does provide meeting space and community space for um, private events, et cetera. Um, and I will mention that the Executive Office of Elder Affairs does recommend um, four to five to actually, I think six now, square feet per um, older adult in the community. So that said, <laughs> We've got 5,000, let's say, times five. I mean, that's a 2,500 square foot facility, potentially. That's not what we're getting. But we are doing something that is really in keeping with what we know we can fill. And I have some information about that if we want to look at it later. And then lastly, maintaining all of the other resources on that campus. So I've got the Historical Society um, landmarks, in addition to, to the society that meets there, of course, and might use our facility if, you know, they have some events too, which would be a nice synergy. Um, the green space, which I can imagine future value added there. Um, 
the tennis courts are staying the baseball field, the soccer field. We'd love a walking track or walking paths, but if not, at least around the soccer field, something that we could do. Um, and the former school building now, um, a decision will be made, of course, in, in how that can be used uh, to the community's benefit um, in the future. I think that got cut off, but um, needless to say, and also having recreation there and all of their programming in the gymnasium is just a wonderful um, value. So, you know, commitment, connection, community, that's been our new tagline, sort of. And just the idea that, yes, a building does make a difference. You know, it can grow in its purpose and value as we just continue to evolve and add and change and recognize needs and trends. Um, a familiar setting, a home away from home, I mean, really, that's, that's what we do. That's what we would like to be able to provide. A safe and comfortable place. Awareness of opportunities engages more people, so that's really, that's the math. You know what I mean? That's how we multiply our, um, our visitors. Proper space and respect for you know the people who come and the people who teach um, and the people who congregate there. It's very important. Cultivating a culture or community inside as well as with the community outside. It's, it's all of that. Diversity is something for everyone. So we talk about our demographic. It's really, you know, even if we start at 60 and not younger, it still goes up to 100. You know how many people are turning at least, you know, well into their 90s and, and 100 today. So that's a 40-year span. That's a lot of different interests, so it really isn't just targeting one, you know, set, so to speak, one set of needs. It's really trying to find what everybody needs and doing something for everyone there, not just one or the other, but ever evolving. Um, you know, I put this up here, and I, I thought twice about it, but I just want you to know, this is some of the connection, but these are quotes from the Duxbury Clipper, because as many people know, Duxbury just got an addition to their formerly 12,000 square foot facility, which was just added 4,000 plus square feet. But they've had that facility now for 20 years, almost 20 years, 18 years. And in that time, it has evolved, it has grown, people have come to know it. It, it wasn't the case at first, it was, it's a process. So a lot of these, um, I just thought these headlines were, we wish we had people that could say this. Um, you know, more room is needed to preserve and grow programming. More room is needed, and they've had it, but it's taken time. The building sides needs to keep up with the increasing needs of residents. So, you know, it's, it's been proven, I guess, is what I want to say here. Don't squelch the need, uh, the interest of the attendees because of a lack of room. Investing in the town seniors through creation of a larger dedicated space is what people, these are, you know, these are um, community members writing that either volunteer, participate, um, send their parents, you know what I mean? It could be anything. And lastly, senior center programs build intergenerational links and volunteering. And how lucky we are to have such a great place in our town. This is how people in not only Duxbury, Marshfield, Hanover, Cohasset feel about the facilities that they've had built. So, that in. And lastly, and this is going to be my ending for Joel, who will come and talk about more of this, but community, which we know. Um, that this building and the beautiful picture, it's a central and visible area of situate, and, and it really will enhance just that property even without the programming and without, without it being the valuable asset that it will be as a senior center. Um, improved parking, God knows, <laughs> with room for our vans, which we don't even see, you know what I mean? They don't even, they can't even park here naturally, but outdoor space, I think the sky's the limit there, but events, recreation, exercise, lots of things that we can do. Um, within for our older adults, multi-use, multi-generational activities on one campus. So we're really excited at what um, the team here has come up with. Joel and Rachel have been great about um, recognizing our needs and translating that into what he's come up with. So I will, with that, turn it over to Joel. Thank you, Rotary Club. Yeah, thank you, Rotary Club. They bought this. And the, yeah, it's a combined effort. All right, thank you. Um, we have inserted in the slideshow a little um, preamble that sort of says similar things that 
Linda went into, but are geared for an audience of Thursday night and next Saturday that may not be fully senior citizens. So what we're at, we wanted to try it out today as a dry run and get some impact from you as whether we should include it or not. So I'm not only looking for impact about the design here, if you want to make comments there, but we'd love to get any feedback on the presentation. Um, so one is I'm going to just do some summaries about the needs assessment sort of from a different perspective. Um, talk about the, the building, walk through the Gates School site plan, and then hit the recreation center at the, at the end. Um, Linda mentioned this. I, 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 these things all impact the design that you're going to see today. But I wanted to sort of use the population trend a, a little bit differently. That we've been trying to do in a number of communities and say, well, a senior center has a great benefit to the people that use it. But we think the senior center has a great benefit to the people that don't use it as well. And we're trying to sort of make those points and want to hear what you think about that. Um, Linda made the key I issue of today's seniors, we're designing for it for you all, and but there's another group coming up right behind us where the, the, the curve doesn't flatten out. So we need to think about the next generation of seniors and what needs to go into this building because we're building a building to last for 50 years years, not just for 10 or 15. So you've seen a big 26% increase in the population. This is taken out of the needs assessment and not looking at you to read the whole thing, but four out of 10 households in situate are made up of older residents. So there's a large population and a large tax base that's covered by senior citizens in, in town. Of the senior citizens in town, 93% want to continue living in their houses in town. Why am I talking about this? Another cohort that's interesting is 48% of the folks that are older than 80 are living alone. And this is this number is true. I was really sort of surprised about it. It's true in Andover. It's true in in, in Chatham, it's sort of obvious, I guess, is as you're older than 65, you live on Social Security, and the average income, the median income of folks in these communities is 26, 20, and over 23. So I was sort of surprised at that number. Why am I saying that number? What Linda said is a trick, and the goal of the Council on Aging is a healthy, aging in place community. A healthy, aging in place population is good for seniors, but it's also good for the community because you can, if you're healthy, less of your income has to go to health care. You can pay your taxes. You don't need abatements. You can maintain your property. There's less impact on emergency medical systems. There's less impact on community services when your population is healthy. So it's not only beneficial to the seniors, it's beneficial for the community to put programs in place that create a healthy senior population. And what's exciting about this is that this is the feedback that the seniors provided from the survey in, 19, in 2015, and it works exactly with the numeric data. What's the first program that folks wanted? Health and wellness. The second program they wanted was outreach, shine, counseling, health. The third program they wanted was socialization, that over 80 cohort, you got to get out and I know for my father, he just stayed at home and never got out and never socialized and that is a deterrent. And last was the educational opportunities that the senior center offers and why do they offer an educational opportunity, obviously for health wellness. So we took all that data and we put into our building, there's four key components, lifelong learning, wellness, information, outreach, and then cafe. So those four categories that I just mentioned are really the co cornerstones of the building, coupled with what Linda mentioned. You can't volunteer, and everybody wants to volunteer. That's the way to get more people to come to your building, but it also gives people uh, a reason to come to the building, help with the setup and take down of tables, help with the kitchen, etc. So we need to design all that into the building. We've done that 
in a two-story building, which I'll walk you through first the building and then the site plan. The first floor of the building you come into is the heart and soul of the senior center. You can't have anything else in this building, but you have a multi-purpose room and a kitchen. That's the heart and soul of a successful community center, a senior center. Everybody says the senior center runs on its belly. You need a good kitchen, a good multi-purpose room. Because, as Linda said, people are frustrated that meals on wheels and other things happen off-site that should really be able to happen on-site. So the first floor of this building is really designed around the kitchen, the multi-purpose room, checking in, administrative services, and social services. So not only is when you come in is there a little lobby lounge, but there's also a cafe lounge that opens up to the kitchen, just like here. So you can come down, have a cup of coffee, sit in the lounge, and it's not just a dedicated space, that lounge is located, so it's sort of the ante room, the entry to the multi-purpose room. So when all sorts of people are coming in and out, they have a paved place to flow in and out of. So you have your sort of community spaces on this level. Administration is right here because you want the administrators to be the eyes and ears on who's coming in on the building. Somebody spills out on the sidewalk, has a transportation office, workstation, to have everybody seen who's coming in and is there assistance needed or what's going on as people come in and out of the building. The second floor is those other programs that I mentioned. Wellness, down in this corner. Two, and you, you said it really well. The seniors aren't all one age group. It's three different age groups, maybe four. Some people are going to want special senior cardio equipment that's going to be different than what's offered down in the rec center. Maybe more recumbent type of equipment. Other senior programs are going to happen in the wellness program that are geared in a flexible way to six-year-olds, to folks that may need exercise, chair yoga, and other things depending on their different abilities. We have program rooms. We have a different variety of sizes so that you can have two programs going on at once or you don't have to constantly be setting one room up and taking it down during the day. So we've designed the building around the meeting the needs today. Um, there is some opportunity for growth of, of rooms. And then last, um, there's an activity space. So I'll, I'll show you pictures of, of what these are. Um, activity space is something that is not offered at all today. In, in your building. So you're going from a roughly 2,000 square foot building to a 15,640 square foot building. That includes a 640 square foot veterans office. So really it's a 15,000 square foot senior center and using some of the numerics that Linda mentioned, four to five square foot per senior, it's well within the acceptable range if not below what some of the recommendations are for the size population. We have a 2,400 square foot multi-purpose room. We have a multi-purpose kitchen that, as I said, it's designed for volunteers as well as professional use. Every room not only becomes a room that can be used by volunteers, every room is designed to be a program room. So your kitchen doesn't just serve meals. It can have cooking classes. It can have other programs going on. It's Thursday morning breakfast with whomever wants to sponsor that conference rooms, programs room, as I mentioned, and flexibility for future adaption, adaptation for that next group of seniors. I'm trying to walk you through. Come in the building at this end of the project. This is what you walk into. The reception desk is off to your right. The stair going upstairs is off to your left. The whole idea is to have come in and understand that there's space upstairs there's space on this level, and there's a patio, your outdoor space, right there off the entry. So you get one, it's like the brokers say, when you go into a house, you have to see everything that's got five seconds to make your sale. And that's what this is trying to do. Okay, now I've come into the lounge. There's a place where you can wait for your shine counseling. You can wait for the receptions that may be providing information. There's the daily activities on the back, the stair going upstairs and then this walkway down to the multi-purpose room. Heart and soul of the senior center, 
the multi-purpose room. It's divisible into two. It's supported by a kitchen to a dining area. Tables can be taken out, used in any sort of different ways. That room, as it's all opened up and it's 2,400 square foot, it's about another third larger than this room, to put it in perspective. So that's sort of what the multi-purpose room looks like. Right here in the middle is where the divisible wall comes through and divides it out. So you can have Zumba on one side. You can't have it today, right? <laughs> and you can have meals on the other side. I mentioned that ante room. You have to have a sort of lobby to get into a big room like that when there are 130 people coming for a program. Well, that lobby is not just a lobby. It's a social place. It's a fireplace. It's a place to have some books, a place to have a cup of coffee, opening into the, cap the, the, the kitchen so that each room has more than one function going on. I mentioned the activity room. One thing we find, and the activity room is a good way to bring some folks that don't want to come to a senior center to a senior center, either via pool and ping pong or card games. Um, we find in other centers that the social and the game activity is sort of a good opportunity to bring people in and see what there is to offer. What This is strategically placed right opposite the veterans office. So when veterans come in to see their veterans officer, they see the activity, they see what the fitness program, so we're really trying to encourage their use as well by locating that where it is. And then we have some activity program rooms that are very flexible. You can see those tables can be set up, taken down. You could have a dance program in here. You can set up the tables in the round. And uh, Rachel put this image on here on purpose because one thing that you may see in other centers that you don't see here is a technology room. There's no computer lab anymore. Everybody knows pretty much how to use their computers. But if they don't, the building's fully wireless. We can have iPad sessions. You can have iPad photography. You can still do everything you used to do in that dedicated computer lab, but now that room's not only dedicated to computers. So flexibility and adaptation. Okay, we're at the Gates campus. This is looking down from the satellite on the Gates School. We have the gym that I'm going to refer to, and the last part is the recreation building on the right. And C-Wing on the left is the sort of post-war addition that's coming down and the senior center is going on that side of the property. It wasn't a, a straight line. We did three different options for how to reuse the Gates campus early on. Um, those options for how to reuse the existing buildings were very expensive. The range was 21 to $27 million. It was clear that that was going to burden the senior center project and it was going to burden other projects in the community. So the selectmen asked us to sort of take another look at, at items, and that included tearing down portions of the gate school and really just leaving the rec center gym building and putting a new council on aging building where the sort of iconic building with the columns is in the middle and sort of replicating that building look with the senior center a lot of community comment about tearing down the Gates School. So, okay, so, I'm sorry, I, I got off track. The original design and the original proposal was the same building. So you have the same 1,600, 15,640 15, square feet. You have the same veterans office. But what led to this change is the community resistance to demolishing the gate school. Some people are for it, some people are against it, but that was an issue that was getting in the way of what everybody wanted was to get a senior center. So to a certain degree, when the senior center is engaged with the gate school, it created some overriding issues. And the decision to disengage the senior center from the gate school by moving it off to the side, it, it, does, it doesn't answer the question of what to do with the gate school, but it doesn't burden the senior center with a decision about what to do with the gate school, and it actually gives you some time to think that through 
without waiting to build a senior center. The longer you wait to build a senior center, inflation is going to build a senior So if we don't do anything for a year, it's another $400,000 to, to build the project. So I think there's a, a nice idea in here um, that works for the building instead of necessarily just uh, a compromise solution. We have the Council on Aging Building. I showed you the slides of coming into the building. That's the entry. Linda mentioned the, the beautiful green space. The, the green space is being preserved. It'll be town center. We, we're sort of designing that space in conjunction with the existing Gate School. There's parking here for the recreation center, adding on to the parking that's already existing in the back. We keep the tennis courts. We're renovating the gym. We have the soccer fields not <coughs> impacted. We're keeping the, the track and amending the end so you have a walking track around the building, around the soccer field. So it's, it's a nice site plan. It, it's very hard to read, but the building is 96 and a half feet from the fence that you see out there. It's 124 feet from the face of the building to the neighbor's property line. It's 132 feet from the face of the building to the face of the neighbor's building. So just pointing out that, yes, we are migrated to the A wing, or the C wing side of the site, but there's still quite a bit of distance between um, the buildings. And as you can see, it's quite a, it's, as much as we can get while still maintaining the green, not taking down trees, and not crowding onto the gate school building. So it maintains most of the gate school. We have the gym in this program staying, but I'll show you it's getting accessibility, and the post-war sea wings being demolished. Okay, so parking lot to the building. This is the entry. There's some handicap accessible parking near the entry there. Um, there's the patio, with the nice in, in the entry space as well. So that's your look at the building. The other side is a brick face, because it ties in to the Gate School campus. So on the side that faces the neighbors, it's residential architecture, wood clavered. On the side that faces the Gates campus, it's brick. You can see again the green space. I think it's really quite nice that the green space opens into the patio because that patio can spill. So when you have your 4th of July mm -hmm. party, yep. <laughs> you're not going in no the parking lot. This year. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a close-up of that, of that patio, which can have a, you know, all sorts of different things to it. OK, I know you want to move on here. So gym building is really a pretty simple renovation. Currently, it's not accessible, which means if you're in a wheelchair or a walker, you can't get to, from the first floor to the second floor in an easy way. You sort of have to work your way through the building in a very long, convoluted manner. So here's the front of the building. We're putting in one new elevator that takes you from this floor, the ground floor, to the second floor. On the second floor where the gym is, and you play badminton or pickleball, and there's all sorts of other programs going on. We're adding accessible restrooms. They're sized to fit the population that might be there on a Saturday morning, basketball programs, and other things. So there's two sort of key components going in that really just make the building more usable. We're also repairing and restoring the roof on the building. So those three elements are the key things that are being done to this to make it a more community uh, active building. So it's a 25,000 square foot building. It gets accessibility improvements. The recreation offices are not moving. They're staying where they are. They also have use of the uh, A wing that's behind the gym the way they do today. So in summary, we have the Castle and Asia building. We started out at 8.5 million. That building um, is now 8.1 million. So of the budget, 8.1 million goes to that brick and wood Council on Aging Senior Center. The recreation building 
has come down as well. That's now a $1.2 million project. We are not renovating the ground floor locker rooms. We're not doing the demolition. So that cost is quite a bit reduced. The site work also is a little bit less expensive um, because we're not having to do so much demolition. We're not having to do so much earthwork. The cable TV program is being deferred. So now we just have veterans in the Castle on Aging building. So that budget has also come down a bit. And then we have demo and abatement, which as I mentioned, has come down considerably because now we only have to demo and abate the C wing and a little bit on the gym. So we end up with a total project cost uh, in addition to soft costs uh, today of right around the 11.9 million. We're looking at um, the cost of adding into that an emergency generator to power either the first floor or possibly all of the senior center building. So that's something that's being looked at on the budget today. So. I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the second, the second floor, the exercise room, what is the square footage of that? 900 square foot for the wellness room itself. And then next to that is a 200 square foot little uh, um, cardio. The equipment. Yeah, cardio uh, room. Just trying to get back to that plan. There. So the wellness, 900 square feet and 200 for cardio. There's also a little cubby locker room water station. Steve, you want to add anything? I, uh, you know, we've gone through quite a bit, um, various iterations of, of design. Um, we've listened to the feedback from uh, the residents of the town, um, the various boards. Uh, we've come up with this particular plan right now that we think is not only provides the function and, and the need for the for the building, but but also addresses uh, budget concerns, uh, overall cost of the project. Um, Again, still still takes care of uh, some of the issues that are necessary for the recreation uh, uh, department and their building uh, for accessibility and uh, some maintenance issues. Um, and I think we have a, a pretty solid plan at this point. That's we're here to sort of get not only give you information on where the status is, but get any feedback that you may have as far as uh, what your thoughts are on this on this plan and. and Joel said the, the presentation itself. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Denise Price, I, I think your presentation is really on point. I think that should be presented to all ages. Um, it's very well thought out and, and just put together, and I think it's it's going to be heard by a lot of people in the right in the right way. Um, I, I think I the, the statistics are there. I mean, and the fact that you're going to be bringing in yes. a broader audience in uh, the, pe the the population, I, it's just, I, th I just think it's awesome. Well, it's a good point I forgot to mention, too, is that not only are we planning for the next generation of seniors, but the current 40 and 50 year olds can use this building as well for information for how they may deal with the parent or, as Linda mm -hmm. mentioned, the multi-purpose room can be open at night, so I'll add that. I, I, okay. I have one quick little question. My spatial relations are less than adequate. The, sure. Are the, the new I've already, the you, you had left a, a message previously. Senior right? building. Yeah. Is it closer to First Parish uh, than the ceiling yes, yeah. is? If the drawing leads right. me to think it, that it, it might be a little bit closer. It is closer to First Parish, a little yeah. bit. Uh, so that gives us more parking That behind. gives you more parking mm -hmm. behind. There's a little bit of a hill as you come off of First Parish that we can't get parking there. So, um, And we wanted the parking to be as close to the entry to the building mm -hmm. as we could. And um, I know the, the First Parish Church may use some of the parking yes. for like Easter or mm -hmm. some of their special Fillover. events, but we thought it was better to get oh, it the is. parking it is. It will be, yeah. off the street it's and have the building a little bit more presence and it works better with the existing building. And that whole community um, um, area, when you enter and be able to see everything, I just you're welcome. Just I'll review fabulous. Thank you. Fabulous. I have two questions. First of all, where is the entrance and exit going to be for the 
So right now the entrance is planned right here off of First Parish. We are having that looked at by a traffic engineer and for Thursday tonight we'll have a, a report from them as to uh, you know if we want to adjust that. So we are looking at that entry a little bit more, but that's where it's currently planned. We know because we're about us and we know how dangerous it is right for that spot. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, are there any plans to engage the abutters with some of the site plan? Because now we have giant parking lots very close to our property. Mm -hmm. the, yes, ma'am. There is a after. I think Linda was working mm -hmm. to schedule an abutters meeting to follow up with this. Yes, ma'am. In the back. The back. Yes. Yeah. Hi. I also agree that it was a good presentation, and I think it leads good for the rest of the town. I have a couple of questions. Did I hear correctly that you're adding some more parking for the gym slash recreation in the front there? Okay. 24 because spaces there. Because I think there. it's overloaded as it is now, and my thought process was they're all going to be parking at the senior center. Correct, yeah. Okay, so you did add that. Yeah. And then number two, if down the road we wanted to expand either parking or the building, is that going to be at all possible? The building has ability to expand in this direction, in this area. Is that where the patio is now? Yeah, okay. it's in the patio. I mean, you'd have to then make some changes. Um, the parking lot would have to expand sort of on the side, extend down here. We haven't wanted to do that because the thought was right. to maintain the ball field in the back. Yeah. But um, there's this whole area, if you remember from the last <coughs> plan, some redesign of this area mm -hmm. can really be improving the parking and the circulation so we think the best way to add on additional parking is sort of cleaning up these areas. Mm -hmm. But it's well, a good I, point. I heard one of the selectmen, I think, say that there's a possibility that they, they might, they only need one more tennis court up at the high school, and if they move a tennis court or have space for that, we can get rid of the tennis courts. But that was a question mark. Well, not to say that we don't know. People love these tennis courts, and they're great yes. tennis courts. Now, right now, they are under a you know mandatory Maya usage, but mm -hmm. at some point, maybe it could be they could be adjusted. I mean, ages and ages hence, you know what I mean? Things evolve. So, so we. Well, I do think you have to think ahead, though. Yeah. Yep. You know, this is not good for years. No. So, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, today, I saw some comments on Facebook, and I didn't have a whole lot of time to respond to them. But the latest thing was, well, a wooden building is going to ruin the historic nature of the whole site. You know, I came here today, the front facade is, is brick, right? Correct. And the back is wood. Correct. So I think that really needs to get out there because it's just not a completely wooden building and you've got the brick with the brick. Right. And the other thing I think that needs to be emphasized is we got rid of using gates, and let's just move on with the senior center and leave the use of gates for five years down the road or, or whatever. But we've got to start this now. And so, as I said, that's my concern. Let's start it. We're not touching historical gates. <laughs> and uh, go for it. But, yeah, I'm glad to see, and I likely missed it the last time I was here, but... The, one whole side of it is brick, and I think that's great. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Where is the rear door? Is there only one entrance? You have to have another door, right? There's, uh, yes. How many doors? But also, if you have a delivery truck, if you're having caterers come in with a lot of equipment, where are they uh, going to deliver their equipment? Uh, let me get in the, the kitchen. Uh, so there are back doors here. Okay. So here's the front door. The back doors here, there are back doors off the community rooms too, so those can open up to the outside. The community room can open to the patio, and then the kitchen and those deliveries are down here, so trash, services, is at this end of the building. Um, then when you drop somebody off at the front door who's handicapped, how do you turn around? 
you have to go right into the parking lot and then come around. Okay. okay, so I bring somebody in and I want to drop off. Ideally, you would come in this way and drop off. So you, okay. you want to drop off on the right side of the car. So we're trying to sort of make right. a counterclockwise circulation. So you, but once you drop off, then you're going right to your parking okay. space. So it's sort of a linear process. What we want to discourage is people coming here and dropping off on the left side yeah, because yeah. then it's hard to get here. And then there's a that entry image we showed has that covered walkway so you can get from your car to a portico before you get into the building, get out of the weather. And then if you're waiting for a, an Uber or a the van or a ride home, you also can wait underneath that portico and out of the weather for a, a ride. Let me get for people that haven't asked a question yet first. Go ahead. Is there any possibility of making that dedicated cafe area a revenue generating space? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a senior center. That would be a question for the senior center. Like a little Mary Lou's kiosk or something well, like that. Well, I mean, really, that is the idea. So, yes, yeah, coffee might cost capsule. 50 cents, and right. there would be lunch and breakfast opportunities right. um, once we build up the program. And, yeah. And we would look at other. I mean, revenue producing could be private rentals as well on the weekend. Right. Mm -hmm. um, We've talked about whether a gift store or something that might use some of what people make at the senior center. So there's no like zoning issues with it being mixed no, use or no, not at all. So that would be. See who I yes. Um, I think Gordon Price um, most of you probably know me. Uh, um, I think it's important for everyone to realize that <clears throat> this plan is a result of a lot of compromise, and I mean a lot of compromise on but but COA by Joel, Steve, and his, and his group, by the board of selectmen. Um, we didn't feel it was appropriate to try to bring a 27 or $30 million plan to the town that wasn't fiscally responsible, especially with some of the other issues that we face. So that's part of the reason. I think it's probably one of the big reasons why we, um, Joel and his, and his people started looking at alternatives. <clears throat> and I think this alternative is a, is a wonderful uh, opportunity. I think he's very fiscally responsible. Um, I'll throw it out there because you know it hasn't been asked, but I'm sure some of you are probably thinking about it. This would result in probably about a hundred and forty dollar increase on your tax bill per year for twenty years, or, or a little over two thousand dollars for twenty years. Um, I think that's a pretty reasonable expenditure. On, on I don't want to see anyone spend another dollar on their taxes, but I think for what this. Is for what this project is going to bring to the community is money that is going to be very, very well spent. So, Joel and Steve and Rachel have done phenomenal work. Um, <clears throat> they've been tugged and pulled and, and turned around three or four times. And you know, some people say, Well, you're rushing the project. This project hasn't really been around for you. Well, no, we haven't been rushing it for 20 years. And, and I really feel that this is the, the best that we have, the best that we've come up with. And I think it's something that the town will be very proud of when we put a shovel in the ground six months from now. That would be a helpful stat to put under the overall cost. That is the cost for housing. Mm -hmm. yeah. For someone to see that on your slide. Okay. Yeah. Like to show the cost of eight point whatever million, but average cost per household, $140. Yeah. 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 Right. When you present it to the right. It presents it a different way. Okay. Yeah. See, if there's anyone who hasn't, who hasn't asked a question, I'll get them first. Okay, yes ma'am? I sort of came, I mean, I'm totally in support of the senior center. I think it's great, but the drawn the renderings that I've seen, like in the Mariner, you know, it's like this really ugly white building with odd angles on it. And I'm just wondering, this doesn't look at all like that. That's why I came, because it just, sorry, it just was a bad marketing. And here I'm like, totally for it. So what was that? It, was it an old plan? It like black. Well, nothing's been squares or something. Nothing's been publicized altogether, but there were other renderings previous oh, like to, to these, which they may have continued to use, and they could have been very early drawings. Oh, it could have been the very, very early drawing when they when we first proposed. She said it was beautiful, so it's all in the eye of the beholder. But what someone else said about the brick. I think that's really important to get out there for yeah. people to see that facade. Yeah. Well, this came about, you know, it was 
uh, January 31st, when the, the Board of Selectmen called sort of the joint meeting, um, Council on Aging and Recreation, and we still had the previous plan, the $19 million, and that was something they were just trying to digest and, and maybe um, hear some views about. But then February 14th was the meeting we had here where Joel was able to present the plan, and they literally had you know, less than two weeks really at that point even a week. It was even a week that you came up with sort of this. So then the design's been ongoing, just saying. So they did not have full renderings when any, when anything was published until uh, the Public Building Commission meeting was then on February 26th. So that's when it was a full, a full rendering design. That was the first one. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, with the multi-purpose room, you're always setting up, taking down, changing the number of tables and chairs. Uh, what storage have you planned for the stuff you're not using? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I thought that was one of the first things I looked for. Yeah. So this, this wall here is storage for tables and chairs, and then there's an audiovisual rack for the hearing assist, Wi-Fi, audiovisual systems. Um, and then the plans evolved a little bit since here. We have uh, another little storage room on that end of the, of the room. It's a good point, and you can never have enough. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the addition, the multi-purpose of the sliders, is it going to be a slider? Yeah, yeah. it's a, a motorized <laughs> slider because it's so big, and it's not like this. It's acoustically, it's heavy, so you can't hear through it, so it's a, on the motor. Yes, ma'am. I always wind up confused on the floor plans. Which part faces the neighbor and which part faces the green? This side faces the neighbor. So um, on the second floor, you'll see the sign that faces the neighbors. They're, they're not a lot of program rooms. It's mostly uh, like a waiting area or a storage room. The, the rooms that have most of the people in them are on the top side of the, of the plan. If we could see the second floor then, so that we could see what's facing <coughs> the neighbors. Can you, can you uh, let's see, there. Um, yeah, the veterans conference room, the nurse's office, two restrooms, and then there's the back side of these two rooms. And how much of a shadow will this building have? <coughs> Well, I mean, how far will it extend in terms of... Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It, it, I mean in, the, in, the, in the wintertime, the shadows do get long, but in the summertime, it will not be anywhere near the fence. And so I, I, we could... It's a good question. We'll have that for... We'll do a little shadow plot for <coughs> Thursday night showing spring, summer, fall. And what, are, what are the lighting plans for this as well? The lighting for the parking lot? Yeah, um, the the parking lot, we, we have, all the light sort of is designed to be within the boundary. The, the, the zoning regulations ask you not to have spillage or light pollution, as they call it. Um, it'll be down lighting. We won't be doing up lighting, so there won't be any sky, um, lights going up to the sky. And there will be some light on the building. There'll be a light at each door that's required by code. And then there will be some lights on the patio side. But we're not intending to light the whole building. It's just the code required lights that are required at every door yes. that's an exterior door. And yeah. what about the parking templates? Those are going directly into our house. And you call it. <laughs> okay, I'll sign well, you up. I don't think they'll go into your house because they're pointing to the fence. The fence will be a solid activities right fence, here. and it's six feet tall, and then there's also a vegetated buffer along that fence line. So it's... Pardon me? <coughs> on the fence line that's on... The uh, it's on Thursday side morning. Of the property uh, we're planning vegetation. At, uh, 9.30, the 25th. I have vegetation on my side, but I'm talking yes. beyond that. You're welcome, right now. The, the plan here will be 
on this strip coming down the building between the edge of the parking lot and the fence. And then you have the solid fence before. And, and remember the solid fence is, is on the, is, it's not on the property line. So you get an additional buffer by virtue of that. The fence that's going on here is the same location as the fence that's there today. And that doesn't happen to be the property line, so you have a greater width then. And on that strip uh, by the fence, will it be um, pedestrian accessible? Because a lot of people do walk up to that property on First Parish and on Cudworth to uh, get on. Get on Our sidewalk is on this side, coming mm -hmm. up here, and then going into it. So we have it on the far side of the parking lot. Yes. But we do have a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So there's no field there. Well, there would be from this side. We, we thought it was better to have the parking lot on this side of the park, the sidewalk on this side of the parking lot. And there's a, there's room to put a sidewalk on the other, but the, if you put a sidewalk on the other side, it would so just diminish the. just at least a walkway without. It doesn't have to be a formal sidewalk, but at least a grassy verge that you could walk. Okay. The, the only reservation I have is it reduces the area that you can plant on that side. So it would reduce your buffer zone. That's why another reason we moved it to the other side. Yes, ma'am. It just uh, seems extremely congested where we are. And on the other side, it seems a little bit more open. Uh, we're, we're all very concerned about the headlights because there is quite an elevation difference. And actually, Linda was in my home, and she could see for herself that when you're in my home, headlights coming in, whether there's a fence there or not, are coming I think that when when the six foot high fence is in and the parking lot's leveled out, you're not going to have headlights that hit into the abutting properties. Um, but there's no access point to a parking lot on the other side. It's all from First Parish. There won't be any access from the other side. Well, folks are free to park over here. It's just it's, it's keeping the gate school. It's a little hard to get there today from this lot to the senior center. So you can't come in from Cudworth by the tennis courts and go loop around? Well, you'd have to come in or come in at the lower point. Yeah. One, of the, one of the issues for traffic is exiting out on the Cudworth is very difficult. You have that a five-way intersection and once you get once you get to this point that you still can't see first parish so the traffic engineer recommended way back when when we did the site study that we not use Cudworth as an exit for the council on aging building I, I can understand that at the five-way intersection but way down by the little old schoolhouse that's not Right, but if you, if you came out here and you wanted to go to town, you have to end up at that intersection then again. Mm -hmm. So and you can't come in by the tennis court and get her to the senior parking lot, is that correct? In theory, you could. If, if folks wanted to, there is a way that we can make a potential connection across the back. So that, that is possible to do, and if, if that's what folks want, you know, that's, we're Very showing that as an opportunity. Okay. I think that's a good you could. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, just to uh, comment on the pre presentation and also back to, you, I think it's a you really. Speak up a little, oh, Karen. sorry. No, no, <laughs> I'll stand up because. Thank sorry. you. Um, <laughs> on the presentation, um, I think it might be really useful to put sort of projected timeline of what comes next, mm -hmm. you know, when the votes are, what's required, what happens to make this possible. Um, that might be a real good short thing. And then to your point about marketing, um, marketing, to have this image as much as possible put on all of our sites and the Facebook pages because, you know, it, it has been a, a very long, quick thing. You know, it got to a long point and now we've got a presentation and, and I thought you did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, it brings it all together, but we need to have as many eyes see it now, between now and and April 8th as possible. So those are my two comments on it. So yeah, well, 
And that I should have done that in my introduction as well, but as, as many know, I think, but if not, um, April 8th annual town meeting will not include anything about this, oh, right. about this project. <laughs> that was a trick. It has been deferred <laughs> to a special town meeting, specially scheduled for May 13th on the Community Campus Senior Center Rec Facilities project. Um, and then it would go immediately to a ballot vote on that Saturday, May 18th. So that is something that I do think people walking into annual town meetings should be aware of, that it's not on that mm -hmm. um, agenda, mm -hmm. that warrant. It is deferred until May 13th. Yes? Um, just the word price again, when it comes to this, about what we've been talking about. We have a group that has been formed in town in conjunction with COA and COSH, and we've met now, I think, on three or four occasions, um, and it's the group that's going to really be... Um, geared towards marketing um, the program and then fundraising also. And the intention is that there will be a capital campaign uh, that will start probably as soon as we know that the, the ballot passed. And um, I think I think we as seniors owe it to the town to show them that we are willing to dip into our pockets individually to help this happen. Uh, we won't make a dollar amount commitment um, but there will be a capital campaign. So if, if, if anyone uh, here this morning would like to help out in any phase of this project for the next seven weeks, please stop by and see me before you leave. And we generally meet every Tuesday morning over at the Methodist Church at 9.30. Um, we've got about 14 people now that are working on the campaign, and we could, we'll, we'll need all of you. We'll need everybody in this room and a lot more to make this happen. So. Um, See me up when we're done. Laura, do you want to add anything at all from your perspective? On well, every time I see your presentation, I see it differently. I really like the idea of the brick in the front and the wood in the back of your building. Um, I think it helps with the abutters. You're looking at more of a residential area in the front, kind of blends in with the other part of the campus. This kind of completes the campus up there. When we first got there, just knowing that this building was going to be abandoned to begin with, mm -hmm. Recreation Bay St. Hannah said, we'll take it. And um, just to go in as a home, because we didn't have a home. Um, I've always been a little jealous of COA. They at least had a building. <laughs> um, now I'm not as much. Now I'm, not as much. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy to make this the kind of campus it's going to be. I think it's just going to get better and better and better as we uh, all come together. You didn't notice, I brought a young man here with me. He left because he had to go back to the office. Uh, he's working for me while he's home on college. I wanted him educated on this. I do believe it does take a whole community and making the community work. You all know that I have a project going on. That's why I haven't been involved in this too much. I have a $10 million project of my own going on, which is the field facilities. We have been creative with our financing. We have hit CBC up. We, we are not raising taxes or we would not interfere on this project because we are all so supportive of this project. So um, I think both projects really have to work in this town. They have both been on the docket for over 20 years, uh, the fields as well as, it's, as the community. I think you people have been around for like maybe 30 years. Because right? <laughs> I remember the years of all of I've been here for 35 years and I remember. And now I'm here, I'm 62 years old. I, I will love working with all of you people and having the young, the old, and the in-between all working together. I hear that from everybody in the community. They want this and they want it to happen. One little thing about our project is we did put a walking trail around the facility up there for anybody to use as a community facility that we're building that will domino everything. The senior softball will be will be affected as much as the, the little people who play soccer out there. So both facilities have to be supported, and I am here for both. So please, as a community, work together and try to make them both happen. And that vote is on April 8th. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, uh, I just have one, one, one little question. I don't even know if it's a question, but I'm going to address it to you, Linda, because I, I don't think it has anything to do with the site or whatever. I mean, you are very budget conscious. You work really hard to 
you know, kind of stay within a budget, maybe mm -hmm. less than what the budget is. I'm, I'm, my concern is that somebody's going to get up and say, what about administration costs? Are they going to increase? Do we have enough staff to take care of all of the programming? But then, as I'm listening to your presentation, mm -hmm. at the beginning, you're talking about the volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to be your comeback for that question, is that? There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I would say that the staff has probably been doing um, as much of the job as they will be continuing to do with increased space and mm -hmm. opportunity. But yes, the opportunity for more volunteering means, yes, that, that they would help with that aspect. I think the one area we'll have to figure out is the kitchen. And if we're doing lunch every day and home delivered meals, that is something. Now, uh, we also get money from the state and how I decide to um, <coughs> organize that money or use that money is something that I could look at for that. So that may change. Things may change a little bit as far as what we're using. I mean, as it stands now, the state pays for basically a full-time position mm -hmm. between two of the staff people here. It's not even on the, the town budget. Okay. That could change. You know, the kitchen might be something, but otherwise, definitely volunteering and maintenance of the facility is something else. Some of that, for instance, custodial services, which right now are, are provided through facilities mm -hmm. budget, not ours. Mm -hmm. That may change or it may not change. That may be provided just more full time. So, you know, it somewhat remains to be seen, but um, there's ways to piece together staffing that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily come out of the town budget or have to add to that. I, I only toss yeah. that out there because you know how people will say, oh, yes. it's going to cost so much no, more money you. because it's a bigger facility. Right, right. You know, also not necessarily. Mm -hmm. But thanks. I have one little thing to add on. Um, yes. The gym part of the building. Yeah. The gym part of the building is very unique in the South Shore, maybe even all of Massachusetts. I don't think I don't know too many towns but short of city. Okay. I'll, they really I'll have a dedicated you to that person. gym just for the town mm -hmm. without being attached yeah, to Her name is Lisa Thornton. So one aspect sure. of this, fixing that up and renovating it is so important because of this little key thing that we have. If we ever pull this down, it would never be built again. So uh, I think that's why a lot of people were really excited about saving the gym part of this complex to begin with. But um, campus, excuse me, Doc. Um, it, it is a campus. I like the campus idea. I think you guys have got a win-win here. And I'm being one of them. I'm excited about it as a community member. Thanks. Our logo, our slogan is build a campus. Yeah, you will see that a lot in the next eight weeks. <laughs> I just have one thing about the marketing piece of this is that when she brought that up, okay, we're the only town that has that. There are some real estate people in this room. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you're bringing people around, okay, to sell a house, you need to also sell the services mm -hmm. that Situate has to offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, to bring them in, not just schools, but it's everything that we have to offer. Okay, and I just think that's really important when you get down to the marketing piece of it. Absolutely. Sure. Sure. Yes, I just want to say thank you very much. Very good presentation, very clear, answered a lot of questions that uh, I happen to have, and uh, very well done. Uh, thank you for your time, and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.